This will be a short and compact video of some key historical facts of the T-34 and is by no means a full documentary. The T-34 was a medium Soviet tank, that was used in the Second World War and after. Equipped with 76.2mm gun it was more powerful than its counterparts in the first part of the war. Tank design which introduced a 60-degree sloped armor supplied good protection against anti-tank weapons. The suspension of the T-34 was inherited from the American M1928 tank, however the United States rejected the T-34 and it was documented as farm tractors. The T-34 had immense impact on the conflict on the Eastern Front and the Second World War and tank design in general. German General von Kleist called it the finest tank in the world, and Heinz Gut Ryan affirmed its superiority over German tanks. Alfred Jody who was the chief of operations staff noted in his diary that this wonder armament was being unleashed on the German divisions although it was surpassed later in the war. The T-34 was the main Soviet tank during the war and remained mostly unchanged until 1944, when it received a firepower upgrade with the introduction of the T-34-85 variant. Production methods was continuously refined, in order to meet the demands of the Eastern Front, and to reduce the production cost. The total number of T-34 tanks was 80,000 units of all variants build, this allowed the Soviets a steady stream of tanks to be fielded despite the thousands of losses against the German army. The T-34 was the most produced tank in the war and also the second most produced after the T-54. The design of the T-34 led to the design and production of the T-44 and T-55 as well as the T-62 which later formed the armored core of many modern armies. The origin of the T-34 came from the T-26 and BT tank series. In 1937 Mikhail Koshkin was appointed as engineer to replace the T-26 and BT tanks. The lessons learned in the battles of Lake Koshin in July 1938 and Kokenkol in 1939 which was an undeclared border war with Japan on the frontier with occupied Manchuria, had huge impacts on the T-34 design. After these battles Koshkin convinced Joseph Stalin to develop a second prototype, a more armed and armored heavy tank. The prototype A-32 tank was tested at Kyubinka in 1939, this led to the production of the T-34. Kushkin named the T-34 after the year 1934 in which he began to formulate ideas about the new tank and to commemorate the year's decree to expand the armored force. Sergo Orjanikic was appointed as head of tank production. Koshkin's team produced two prototype T-34 tanks in January 1940, from April and May the prototypes underwent a grueling 2,000-kilometer drive from Kharkiv to Moscow to demonstrate to Joseph Stalin. This drive proceeded to the Mannerheim line in Finland and back to Kharkiv via Minsk, drive train shortcomings were identified and corrected. The first production of the T-34 tanks was completed in September 1940, and completely replacing the T-26, BT tanks and the multi-turreted T-28. The production of the T-34 had initial problems as it had heavier armor than any medium tank to date, and problems with the defective armor plates. Only the commander's tanks were fitted with radios, due to shortages, the rest of the tank crews had to use flags for signaling. The fitted L-11 gun did not live up to expectations, and was replaced by the more powerful 76.2mm gun. The model 1940 T-34 series that was initially produced only totaled 400 units. Mass production of the T-34 series was done at several factories. At the Kharkiv diesel factory the model V-234 engine was manufactured and at the Kirovsky factory in Leningrad produced the L-11 gun, and the Dynamo factory in Moscow did the electrical components. Tanks were initially built at the KHPZ in early 1941, and at the Stalingrad Tractor Factory, and also starting in July 1941 at the Krasnoy Sormovo Factory in Gorky. With the German surprise attack on June 22, 1941 which was Operation Barbarossa it was necessary to move these factories eastwards towards the Ural Mountains. While this evacuation and relocation effort was in process between September 1941 and September 1942 some more burden was placed on the Dzerzhinsky tractor factory in Stalingrad in which they worked double shifts to make up for lost production, 
and produced 40% of all T-34 tanks in this time period. Although the designers was aware of shortcomings any remedies would have slowed down the T-34 and was thus not implemented, the only changes allowed up to 1944 in production was that of cheaper and simpler production ways to reduce cost. Over a period of two years the cost was reduced from 269,000 rubles in 1941 to 193,000 rubles to a lowest cost of 135,000 rubles. In 1943 an initial 1,300 T-34 tanks was built each month which was the same as three full panzer divisions. At the end of 1945 a total of 57,300 tanks were built, a further amount of 34,780 tanks of all variants in 1944, and another 22,920 tanks of the revised T-34-85 version in 1944 to 1945. With the start of the German-Soviet War the T-34 tanks made 4% of the Soviet arsenal, and by the end it was around 55%. A few aspects will be highlighted like design, firepower, mobility, and ergonomics. The T-34 tanks was equipped with sloped armor, a relative powerful engine and wide tracks, the benefit of the sloped armor was a reduction in weight as the sloped armor increased the angle of attack survivability to an increased width of armor. The majority of the tanks up to 1944 was fitted with a 76.2mm gun and was able to penetrate any German tank at normal combat ranges. The firepower was however diminished by the lack of situational awareness by commanders and their preoccupation by gunnery duties. German tanks could shoot three rounds compared to one by the T-34 crews. On mobility it was equipped with a model V2 38.8-liter diesel engine of 500 horsepower, giving it a top speed of 53 km per hour or 33 miles per hour. The original T-34 suffered an unsatisfactorily ergonomic layout, where the two-man turret crew arrangement required the commander to aim and fire the gun. This two-man turret arrangement was cramped and insufficient compared to the German three-man turret layout. The following part will be a short and compact description of operations that the T-34 was involved with in the Second World War and after. When Germany launched Operation Barbarossa in 1941 the Red Army had 967 tanks and 508 KV tanks which was concentrated in five of the 29 mechanized corps, the T-34 tanks had a psychological shock on the Germans as the German army only had inferior tanks at that time available. Despite the fact that the Soviets had a superior tank available, they lost most of them within weeks. Combat stats of 1941 show that the Soviets lost up to seven tanks to one of the Germans. The destruction of the T-34 on a large scale was not only the advanced tactical and operational skills of the German army, but also mechanical and design flaws. Mechanical breakdowns accounted to 50% of all losses. Other factors that diminished the initial impact of the T-34 was the poor state of leadership, tank tactics lack of radios and crew training. Following Operation Barbarossa the T-34 tank was also used in the Manchurian campaign, which started on August 9, 1945, when the Soviet army invaded the Japanese-occupied Manchuria. A complete surprise attack was launched by the Soviets, which was spearheaded by the T-34-85 tank. During the Korean War from 1950 to 1953, the North Korean People's Army was equipped with 120 Soviet-supplied T-34-85 tanks that spearheaded the invasion of South Korea in 1950. The use of the bazooka by American troops had no impact on the T-34, as well as the 75mm gun of the M24 Chaffee tank. However with the introduction of the American M4 Sherman, M26 Pershing and M46 Patton tanks, combined with the British Comet and Centurion tanks the Korean Army began to suffer losses with the T-34. By the time the Korean Army was forced to withdraw from South Korea a total of 239 T-34 tanks and 74 Su-76 tanks was lost or abandoned. In the Angolan Civil War from 1975 to 1988 an extensive number of T-34-85 tanks was deployed. The Soviet Union shipped 85 T-34-85 tanks to Angola as support for the Cuban military effort. 
Papla the Angolan army deployed the tanks against UNITA and the National Front for the Liberation of Angola called FNLA and on June 9, 1975, which forced the South African government to reinforce UNITA with a single squadron of Eland 90mm armored cars. Countries that used variants of the T-34 after the Second World War is Yugoslavia Croatia Bosnia-Herzegovina Serbia Montenegro Egypt in the Six-Day War against Israel In conclusion the Soviet T-34 tank in its different versions had a direct impact in several conflicts and had a lasting impact on tank design. Thank you for watching, subscribe to my channel for more historical videos.